Sandy Monroe is going to be here to talk about electric trucks and what took so long for it to happen. And we're gonna start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward like Sandy's monthly appearances on this channel in addition to weekly electric car news. With Ford doubling the production goal for its all-electric F-150 Lightning and Rivian only a couple of weeks away from delivering essentially the world's first electric pickup truck while eyeing an IPO, things are moving pretty fast and Sandy is here to tell us why we couldn't have all of this sooner. He'll be here in just one second, but of course before that a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by the Volkswagen ID4 EV, which I am now a proud owner of. In addition to all of the gadgets and perks, it comes with three years of unlimited charging at over 500 Electrify America DC fast chargers here in the United States. See if you love the ID4 as much as I do by exploring the link in the description of this video. All right, Sandy, so I'm um, glad to have you on as well. Now, I have, I have a little convention to make because I know you just checked out the uh, F-150 Lightning. Uh, I was very jealous, but I was excited when I got an offer from Ford to do the same thing, to, to check it out when it's here in Palo Alto, California. And uh, I looked at the schedule and I told Ford, I said, I can't do it. I have something better to do because we had this <laughs> well we had this scheduled and i said i am not yeah. missing out on talking to sandy over some little truck that you have so my assistant oh. is there right now taking some footage and trying to find out the real range but just so you know uh, this is this is this is almost happened for me but didn't uh and i figured you know wow it's very Let's talk about the F-150 and electric trucks because uh, they are finally coming in. It looks like in the next 12 months or so with a Rivian and a Cybertruck and, and the F-150 and a couple of others. But I know a lot of people are asking uh, and I feel like I know the answer, but like, you know, we already have four-door sedans and, uh, you know, uh, SUVs and crossovers and, and even hypercars that are all electric. Why are we, and even like delivery vans and semi-trucks, uh, what took so long for pickup trucks? Why are they the last ones on the list, even though they're the most popular here in the U.S.? The sacred cow. The sacred cow. <laughs> they're the sacred cow. They're the cash cow and the sacred cow at the same time. Nobody wants to screw around with, uh, with pickup trucks. Nobody, because that's where you make the most amount of money. Um, the rest of the cars, and, and like small cars make very little money. <clears throat> Medium-sized cars like C-Class and whatnot, that's where your volume is and you make some money. But when it comes to pickup trucks, that is the, uh, that's the cash cow. And so tampering with the cash cow, uh, that, that, that takes some giant cajones. <laughs> you, uh, you really have to, uh, you really have to uh, have a good, uh, reason for doing anything. So when Alan Mulally uh, decided he wanted to have, uh, when Alan Mulally decided he wanted to have a uh, uh, an aluminum pickup truck, I mean, uh, I wasn't there at the time, but I can guarantee you that there were there was a ton of uh, truck guys jumping off cliffs or off bridges or drowning themselves in a bathtub, slashing wrists. That's a, that was a big giant decision on his part to do that. Um, and I'm sure he wasn't popular, but it did work out good for Ford. Uh, hopefully Ford is sending him a bonus check now. Um, but, but, but tampering with, tampering with pickup trucks is a big, big deal. And I just absolutely flat out know that, um, that when, when people were talking about it, this would have been a parallel program. So the, the, the guys on the electric car, they didn't tell me this, but I know about parallel programs when I was at Ford and that parallel program is really gonna pay off. I'm, I'm very impressed with the Lightning. Very, very impressed. Yeah. All right, now, so are you saying that it's not a technology issue? It's not, it's not because it's harder to develop, it is more of they just afraid to, to touch it? Yeah, fear. Um, you got to remember that there's a, uh, there's a situation <clears throat> in car companies. Um, it's called the car career dilemma. So if it's good for the car and it's good for my career, ah, easy, uh, I'm, I'm going to do it. 
If it's good for the car, but bad for my career, not a chance. And that's what most people would have looked at. And they would have looked at it and said, wait a minute, this has got a risk associated with it. This could ruin my big promotion. So you don't do it, you walk away. If it's good for the career, bad for the car, but it looks like it could be politically correct and you could get a promotion, so long car, I don't care. And that's kind of the, in fact, the best way to get promoted at the big three is say no. And it's not just the big three, it's every car company. The best way to get promoted is say no a lot. If you say no a lot, you can't lose. Because if you say no and it fails, you win. If you say no and it succeeds, you say, well, yeah, but they took my advice. And I went and talked to them and told them about all of the things that could go wrong. And, and we together remedied it, even if they did nothing but pour poison into, um, in, into everybody's coffee. It, uh, no is the best way to get promoted. So if, if you're out there and you got your MBA and you're thinking of joining a, a big car company, not Tesla, don't try it, or any of the new startups, don't try it there. But if you're decided to go into a bigger car company, all you gotta do is say no and get promoted every day. Duly exactly. noted, duly noted. Now, okay, but what if we don't talk about the, the, the legacy manufacturers? I mean, even with startups, right? Even, you know, Tesla and Rivian and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, Tesla already has a, a Roadster, uh, a, a compact sedan, uh, a luxury sedan, uh, an SUV or a van and a cross. You know, it's kind of a, almost the last one on their list. And then, you know, Rivian and Bollinger and a couple of others are starting with it with a pickup truck. But it's, you know, it's 2021. <laughs> um, what why do you think Tesla is also kind of put that on the back burner? I think all they were doing was moving on up. Um, um, all car companies, no car company that I know of ever started off with a pickup truck. They only start off with something that'll get their name into the marketplace. Usually what they want to do is they want to have something that's going to excite people like, uh, like a sport car or something like that. So that's how they normally start. And then as they get bigger and better, then they go into truck development because as, uh, as you probably know, uh, Nissan and trucks didn't work out real well. Toyota's trucks weren't widely accepted. Um, Honda, did, it didn't work out real well for them either. Truck people are different and you have to tune, you have to tune everything to the, um, to the buyer. And if you don't understand the buyer, then uh, trucks is the last thing you want to try and get into. That takes a lot of marketing, a deep amount of marketing and whatnot. And, uh, and I will tell you that truck people, truck buyers, uh, they, they buy uh, the badge as a rule. Now, things might change here with, um, uh, with this uh, Lightning, but I will tell you that normally, truck buyers buy the badge. I buy Chevy. I'm, um, I'm a Ford man. I only drive Ram, on and on. That, that kind of is the way it works, but but I'll tell you what, um, after driving, I didn't get a chance. They wouldn't let me drive it. I think they afraid I was gonna break it. And I didn't really get what I wanted. I wanted to get on Belgian blocks to see how that suspension really worked because that suspension is kissy, I think is the old fashioned term. It really, it really, it handles well. It rides like a dream. I initially, Corey and I were talking as we were walking back into, uh, into the hangar that, or the, well, it used to be a hangar. Where they had the um, where they had the uh, the F one fifty we could get our picture taken with, and um, uh, the 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 Laredo. Anyways, when we got in there, um, the first thing I wanted to do is dive under that truck. I was polite for a while, and uh, they said, "Well, you want to have a look at it?" And I went under there. I I wanted to see what the heck was going on. Why? Where did that ride come from? And I figured it had independent suspension. But when I got underneath and I looked at, uh, especially the rear suspension, blow away time, uh, I thought it had air suspension. It doesn't, but, but it's, a, it's, a really, it's a really good ride. Really, really good. The yeah. only person I know who got to drive it outside of Ford right now is President Biden. I don't know anybody else who got to drive it. Uh, well, if Biden drives like he looks, <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing it was a safe bet. Yeah, it yeah. was. A, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so, okay, but let's talk about the technology itself. Is it harder to make the pickup truck, the electric pickup truck? 
does the battery need to be bigger? I mean, last, you know, last time we discussed, you know, how battery doesn't matter as much as efficiency for, for the range. Um, right. What are the differences when you're building an electric pickup truck versus, you know, crossover and everything else? Like, for example, you know, a lot of people say, well, why couldn't Tesla take a Model X, right? You know, cut out, you know, a little quarter of it into the little bed there and boom, you have a pickup truck. Uh, what are the actual challenges? Number one is load. How do I load up um, uh, a Model X so that I can, um, you know, take 50 bags of concrete? How do I, how do I figure out how that, uh, that Model X, how do I figure out whether or not I can get it through the mountains pulling a trailer? Um, how do I redesign that Model X so that, um, so that I can have the lighting and in, in what that I need? A again, when you're looking at a truck, okay, so there's two kinds of vehicles. Um, one is, um, is a, um, um, a monocoque design, a body in white, a, um, I, whatever you want it. It's, 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 a, um, it's a product that you weld a whole bunch of bits and pieces to to reduce cost and weight. The other is called a rolling chassis, and that's what are a framed vehicle, and that's what trucks are, framed vehicles. And the reason that they're mostly all frame is because, because of the loading and the workload that you're going to go through for that truck. That's a totally different kind of vehicle than, uh, than a Model X. I, I, there's no way that uh, I wouldn't touch that one with a barge pole. It just won't work. It's just not right. Um, and truckers won't buy it. And you'd put all the money into changing a top hat, and then somebody would fill it up with concrete. The thing had collapsed. The wheels, back wheels would splay out, and, and now you've got a, uh, like a, a nightmare when it comes to the press. So, <clears throat> so, that's, that, so you're, you're going to be looking at a clean sheet kind of design. And that's why, um, that's why I think Tesla decided to go with the... Um, with the way the Cybertruck is. The Cybertruck is built precisely for me. I want to go hunting. I want my quad in there. I want, uh, I want to be able to sleep in there. I want to have, um, you know, uh, something, uh, something I can make breakfast or make something to eat in the back. That's, that, they know exactly what their, their target market is, and it's me. I don't know why they designed it for me, but I'm happy that they did. So if you look at the Rivian, the Rivian is made for the sport guy who also needs that truck, that, that, that pickup. Okay, so it's smaller than, uh, than the Lightning is, but you know what, it's a lot more nimble, a lot more agile, and, uh, and it has things that the camper is gonna want. So it's got the pass-through uh, kitchen and all the other, <clears throat> all the other doodads that, that if I was, uh, if I was uh, in the need for a light pickup, I think it's, it's bigger than a, than a Ranger, but smaller than F-150. So it's right in that sweet spot middle where a Ranger guy might want to move up or a truck guy like a, a, a light, a, a, an F-150 guy might want to move down. That, that, that's a good idea. And, a, and, a, and I think that they're going to capture a big market. And then you've got, you've got the, uh, the Lightning. That Lightning is perfect, absolutely perfect for a construction guy. I, I, like I said, I didn't get a bottle of perfume me or uh, what do you call it, uh, gasoline perfume, but I did get a pretty detailed um, uh, assessment of what's going on. They told me a lot of things that normally press people don't ask, like, you know, what's the economy of scale here? Uh, okay, so when you find out that uh, the body, that same body is like 4 million or around 4 million, that they're going to be producing, oh, that body's cheap. That's the outside part, the skin part that you see. And then the frame is like, a, like two million. It's close, that, that production scale's already there. That means that it's really, um, it's really an effective use of their, of their um, what do you call them, the, uh, the parts bin. So that kind of stuff made a, whoever did this really, really thought hard about how to make things work. And they made it look like it, like like the normal F-150, and they changed a few things here and there, but they didn't change a lot. And the reason that is because they want the headlights, they want the body parts, they want all these other things that make up the four million componentry uh, packages that they could pull into that vehicle. That's smart. That's really smart engineering. That's good business. 
that's good everything actually. And then going inside and saying, okay, the guy that's buying this truck or gal that's buying this truck, what do they need? Oh, I need a lot of sockets. I need a lot of outlets. I need tremendous amounts of torque. I want blah, 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 on and on and on and on. And they did everything, including the office, which I really kind of liked. That little office. So, um, uh, and, and I will tell you that when I was a kid, I worked in construction and rotating is uh, kind of important, especially if you're trying to squeeze down and get the job done. Sometimes you just, you're exhausted. You can't do anymore. You go into the, into the truck, you can be typing or doing what you need to do for uh, invoicing. And uh, maybe one of the crew has just had it, they're, they're done. They flop down, they, they turn the, uh, the, the, the passenger seat into a bed. And the next thing you know, they get uh, 40 winks and then they're back in the job and they can get the job done. I mean, everything about it. The lights, turning on lights is really tough. And I hate the smell of generators. Uh, mo sometimes like a Honda, it just smells like exhaust fumes. But some of these bigger ones that are diesel, I mean, they make you want to puke after a little while. Th that stuff's all gone now. All they do is done. I mean, I'll take that all day long. I, I, there's a lot of stuff I really like. From a construction kind of standpoint, uh, it's going to be tough for everybody else. I don't know who's going to compete with that thing. All I right, really so don't. We'll get to the engineering in just one second, but I wanted to also uh, get, get your opinion on, you know, that the truck is priced very, very well, like at 40000 before the incentives. Yeah. Uh, from what you've seen so far, do you think it's reasonable in terms of them still being able to make good profits on it? Because that's pretty cheap. Yeah, I know, but here's the deal. So the upcharge is going to be the battery pack. The motors are cheaper than an, than an engine, okay? So uh, let's just look at what's expensive. The expensive part is going to be the battery pack. What about the body? Well, the body is the same size. I mean, I just said that. The body is the same price as the one that they're producing millions of already. The, what about the frame? Well, the frame is pretty much the same as what they're producing already. Maybe they have a few more screw holes. I didn't get a chance to blueprint the bottom of the thing, but, uh, but it looked to me like this is pretty much the same. They might have to punch a couple more holes or add a couple of brackets or something, but that's pretty much the same. The seats, oh, they're already making millions of them. They're getting the economy of scale for all this other stuff. So at hitting it at 40 grand, yeah, they're going to make plenty of money. I don't think they're going to lose on that. And when you get to the, to the bigger ones, like I initially thought that, I, in fact, I told my listeners to, uh, if you're going to buy one of these things, buy the Platinum. Because you only spend it once. You'll forget about it in six months. And, uh, but you'll love the fact that, you know, you've got all this luxury. Well, after talking to them and seeing the difference between the Platinum and the Laredo, well, I think the Laredo is just fine. Uh, I don't think I'd need all the extra doodads that they've got in the, um, in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the platinum. I, I really like the, uh, I really like the, the Laredo a lot. And it's got all the features and functions that I'd want. And it doesn't have some of the frills that, you know, maybe I might never use. So, uh, so they basically talked me out of a $90,000 vehicle and dropped it down to about a $70,000 vehicle. And when you're talking to truck guys, 70,000, 90,000, these guys are, they, big trucks, big bucks. That's kind of like what, what everybody says. And, and you're, you're looking at guys that, that can afford it and, uh, and will, I don't know, I don't know what the pre-sales are on that thing, but uh, my guess is that they'll be sold out for a couple of years as soon as that first truck hits the, hits the road. Yeah, they have about 120,000 reservations that just crossed at a, um, but so, but let me ask you about something that, you know, I took an issue with, but I'm not a truck guy. So actually it would be interesting to find out what you think. You know, they have two, uh, obviously battery options. And one is the highest yeah. one is for 300 miles of EPA range. There are indications that they actually are trying to over pro uh, under promise and over deliver, but let's say it's 300 miles of an actual range which would be great for, for a regular car. But, you know, once you start hauling stuff in it and once you start loading it up with stuff, you know, you can lose half of that range. And then if you're at the, if you're below 200, you know, all that, that, that jet ski trip or the hunting trip that you go on, you know, all of a sudden feels like it's going to be a bit of a range anxiety. What, what is your take on uh, what the actual range should be for a pickup truck, knowing that you're going to 
whole stuff behind it and, and load it up? What, what would be the yeah. magic number for you? For me, it'd be around 500 miles. I would like to have that because once I start throwing a trailer on the back, there's 30%. If I'm hauling, like, uh, it, that thing will hold 200, 200 kilograms, or I think it's 200 uh, kilograms of weight, so about 400 and, uh, 440 pounds. Is that right? Or was it 400? I can't remember, but say around 400 pounds, something like that. So uh, in the front. So I don't know what kind of wheel bearings they have. If the bearings are good, uh, weight becomes less of an issue, especially if it's located over, right, directly over the top of the, uh, of the front wheels or the rear wheels. Um, so that's not so bad, but pulling, um, that, sucks, uh, that sucks battery dry in no time flat. But I do know that, uh, that um, Ford, or no, is it Ford? Somebody, anyway, has, has told me that they're going to develop a um, they're going to develop a trailer that's basically a battery pack, and you're going to be able to plug into your existing Ford uh, through the charge port, and you're going to be able to suck power out of out of the uh, the the pup the uh, the trailer that you've got and put that into your car as well. So that kind of a situation, if you can make that work. Um, you'll get my 500 miles and in some probably. And, uh, but the, the better part or the thing that's there already is they've got a calculator that'll tell you how far you're going to be able to get with a trailer stuck on the back end. And uh, so you put in all the parameters of the trailer that you have and then it takes off and, uh, and after a few miles it comes back and says, based on where you're going, and based on the conditions, the weather conditions, the road conditions, the elevation and stuff like that, all this stuff, based on all these things, well, guess what? Then you can say that, um, that you've got uh, this much range and you can, you can plan your trip. So I, I, think it's, I think it's great. All right. Actually, uh, you know, there's another thing that people are forgetting. <clears throat> Tesla is going to allow, allow people to go to their supercharger. So... Um, my wife, Susan, um, she had the Tesla and she's never gone to a super station before, a supercharger station. And, um, and we were driving around and so it got down to, I don't know, 30 miles or something like that. And she said, well, what am I going to do now? I said, just push the button, ask the, uh, ask the car where the, where the nearest, uh, supercharger station is and go and fill up. What? Well, how does it work? I said, I just told you, drive in, plug in. And when it says 80%, leave. So she did. It took her 12 minutes. 12 minutes with a superstar. And so all of a sudden, now she's like, um, I don't know, I, I, uh, she's, a, she's an EV enthusiast. How about that? How so about that? Here's the deal. If I've got my Ford truck, I have no affiliation with uh, Charge America or whatever, or America Charge. Or, I have no affiliation with any of these characters. And if I can, if I'm allowed to uh, to charge up at a super station or a supercharger, and I drive in with my uh, my little attachment, plug into uh, you know uh, uh, the big boy charge, they're everywhere. Tesla's got charging stations everywhere. I would not feel uncomfortable at all if I only had 150 miles because the only, the one and only time we needed all of the 300 miles that we could get out of the, uh, out of the Tesla, the Tesla Model 3 when we were on a cross country trip was from the mountains, which I didn't have, there was no city, no nothing, and Reno, that's it. That was the only time. And, and believe me, uh, that made us nervous because there was nothing there. And I mean zero. I didn't even see tumbleweed. <laughs> this was like this was like zero. There's nothing going. So, but if I had if I had that truck, and I had you know, and I'm pulling a trailer, and I've only got 150 miles, I can plan that out. I just say you know, give me the give me the route to wherever uh, through the mountains and everything, and uh, and uh, I just go 150 miles at a, at a crack. I'll take that all day long. Uh, I, I, I do it because I could charge up so quick.
Yeah, I, I think the challenge, and I hope hopefully it will be solved soon, is that when, when you do want to go off-roading or overlanding, there's not, nothing there, like you said, like, you know, not even a Tesla supercharger, but hopefully it will change. Um, <clears throat> now, before we go, let me let me ask you the most important question, since you already mentioned it, the, the gasoline-scented uh, fragrance that Ford uh, is, is a close. <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to have one pretty soon, but... Um, all right. Uh, what are your thoughts? Because it came from a survey and at least 70 percent of Ford uh, participants said that they will at at some level will miss the smell of gasoline. So Ford said, you know, guess what? You can add it up with this with this fragrance. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I am sorry, but I'm going to have to butt in here and let you know that that answer is only going to be available to my premium members who support this channel. And if you want to know, and this is, I think, the only place you'll ever see Sandy talk about fragrances, you will have to already be a member or become one, which is actually quite easy. All you have to do is click on the join button and you will have access to all of my premium videos for which I thank you. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Sandy's channel. And I put that link in the description of this video. All right. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.